All right, so we're here just testing out. I did a couple of modifications to the upcoming live stream setup. And so I really just want to see what it sounds like. I got dinner tool pulled up. I think I want to react to this video um, while also doing that just to see how things are sounding, things are looking. Comment down below. Let me guys know what you think of the look so far. The Mantuary podcast is coming back soon, so I'm trying to prep myself for that. And it'll be a wider angle for the Mantuary podcast, me and my wife. And every now and again, we'll have guests and different topics and stuff like that. But I'm really going for more of the darker look. I really want a I don't want it super bright. I was hating the lights that were cutting across my face, cutting across my nose. Wasn't a big fan of that. Didn't like the background. I thought it was too bright. So I've been really massaging my setup for the last couple of months really trying to tone it in so let me know what you guys think of it so far let's go here to the dinner tools he has a video that talks about the knife that is currently the ten dollar walmart knife that's breaking the internet now i think i've seen some thumbnails for this knife but um i want to know what the heck is going on with everybody when it comes to this knife bro like real 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 talk have you seen the ten dollar walmart benchmade knife that broke the internet it's so crazy because there's so many benchmade clones that are already out there there's like the like there's a difference between clones and counterfeits and i think this is why walmart can get away with i say get away with quote in air quotes I think that's why they can do this type of stuff. Hold on, let me see. I'm, I'm recording this video because I'm waiting for my sons to go to sleep. They took a really late nap. So my goal is just to make sure that they're not ripping their room apart and uh, terrorizing one another. You might not be able to see them. Here, let me go full screen real, real quick for y'all. So they are, I can see them in their room. They're still up doing their thing. And so I don't want to go get in the bed because I already know myself. I'm going to go get in the bed, you know what I'm saying, go 20 toes with the wife or at least try it because she's already asleep. And then I'm going to go to sleep. And I can't have my three-year-old and my two-year-old just running amok <laughs> in their room because they might escape. And, you know, that, that could just be bad. So let's see what's up with this knife. Well, here it is. I got one. It looks like the bug out. I mean... The holes are a little bit different. Pause. Um, I can grab a bug out just to kind of compare and contrast. I don't have another camera set up, but I do. I mean, we've seen the bug out. We've seen videos. I've done videos on the bug out. It gives me bug out vibes. And yeah, I'm fibbing a bit. It's not really a Benchmade, but it looks an awful lot like the Benchmade bug out. It even and Benchmade's a litigious company. Okay, if they thought that somebody was infringing on their design, they would go for the jugular. Now, will they go for the jugular of Walmart? Probably not. Walmart money is way too long to be trying to F around and find out, right? But there, like I said, there's a difference between clones and counterfeits. Clones are just, they take the design cues, they make something that looks similar. They're not using your logo. They don't use your marketing material. They don't even mention your product you know, and they just made a clone, you know, and, and I think that that's a washy area in terms of law and tort law and all that type of stuff where a counterfeit is got kind of more cut and dry. They're using your logo. They're maybe even kind of sketchy using your name. I see that a lot going on right now when it comes to hiring like Kaiser knives. Some we knives counterfeits are coming out and you know, what does that mean that these companies have to do with each other? It has the Axis style lock that you see on a lot of Benchmade knives. And, and the Axis lock was the very first knife that had the Axis lock was the 710 25 years ago. Um, they just came out with the, like the, like, you know, the, they're celebrating it by re-releasing it with another edition. They've kind of redesigned the Axis lock. They done a lot with the Omega Springs to make them a little bit better, a little bit harder to actually bust up, which I can appreciate. And if the ramp feels way better on the actual pivot, the crossbar lock is still really strong, depends on how you do it. So I'm a big fan of it. And uh, it's, I don't know if it's my favorite lock. I think it's one of my favorite to fidget with. I have it here on my actual Benchmade. This one was not $10. Now that Benchmade is old AF. 
I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even like. I see. I don't know what benchmate he has there. That might maybe that's uh, I've some. I mean, that thing looks like a old school. I'm embarrassed to say how much I paid for this, but you know, between the two, which one's the you know best bang for the buck? Are they just as good? Is this ten dollar knife just as good as this? I think it was two fifty, two seventy five. When wouldn't I mean? I mean, but you've had it for years, so it's like. A lot of times we spend this money on these knives and we're kind of like, oh, my God, I spent $200 on a knife. And the next thing you know, 10 years have gone by. And it's like, OK, I've spent $20 a year on this knife. Math for Marines. Is that correct? Right. Does it feel worth it? I open it 10 times a day. I've used it to cut all sorts of stuff, zip ties and I've pruning plants and breaking down boxes and having it in a pinch and I've taken it in hunting and it's very durable and I really sharp it and it's bench made. I can send it in. They sharpen it for me and it just is reliable. And $200 doesn't sound as bad, right? I don't know if we have a long enough history and maybe I need to do a full video because this video is members only. Maybe I need to do a full video because I don't know if we have a long enough history with Chinese made knives and a lot of these third party knives to test out longevity. Is there a such thing as the 1995 catalog of sub EV? No, it's not. There is no such thing, right? There's a there's a 1988 catalog of Benchmade. There's old school catalogs, you know, earlier 2000s for Spyderco. They're, they're, you know, these are, I think the American made companies have longevity and warranty on their side. I love what some of these knife companies are doing nowadays. But I am nervous to know what these knives are going to be like in 15, 20 years. I don't know if there's a track record like Spyderco, Benchmade, Case, Buck, um, Opnail, if I'm mispronouncing that, Pound Sand. I don't know if there is a use case similar to those for all these companies that are kind of popping up. When I bought it, uh, ridiculously overpriced knife. Which one's overpriced is a strong word. I think that. It feels overpriced because of the deals that we're getting nowadays, right? But if you look at the materials, the lifetime warranty, the life sharp program, normally they choose a better bl blade steel. It's made in America, made uh, American steel, American parts, American workers, cost more money to rent American facilities. I don't like to be a total sheep for bench made, but I do. I am able to more closely relate to their pricing scheme. Because if you think about it, for we or Savivi or Taiwanese Spider Co. or Chinese Buck, those have lower labor costs. A lot of them also are not importing American steel into those countries to build a knife that has American steel. They're using Asian steel or Chinese steel, Japanese steel, whatever. So... I think that sometimes fair and reasonable pricing for knives has to have a little bit more of a breakdown. It's better. Well, that's going to be up to you to decide. Now, this does have, and I think why is people are getting excited, it has D2 steel, which is... And the thing is, it's like, he said it's kind of up to you to decide. I think that's true when it comes to better, because there's going to be things beyond just how does it perform that makes it a better knife. How does it look? How does it fit in your pocket? Is it easier for you to deploy if you have big fingers or small hands or whatever, right? better is there's not really a delta right if you ever try to eq a microphone or e, you know test out some headphones you can make a delta you can put a microphone in front of like a a sound stage press play play the same decibels and just test and see how sensitive a microphone is and say this microphone's more sensitive than that microphone everything is controlled it's kind of hard to do that with knives that's why i kind of laugh when i see torture tests of, of knives shout out to best damn udc because the delta is not controllable. You get fatigue in your hand, making the same cut, your, your hands, the temperature's changing, your hands are getting sweaty, you're not taking the same angle. I think that if you have, if you're able to build like an Arnold Schwarzenegger type of machine that could just put every knife in and do the tests without a human being involved, I think it would be a lot a better way to test these things out with the true delta. It's a decent steal, especially D2 is just, here's the thing. The reason that the price on this thing is two, $10 because it's D2 steel. And some companies are coding D2 steels and stuff like that. But 
I still don't feel comfortable taking D2 still out in the wilderness with me. The reason that a Benchmade bug out works with the S30V still is because if you accidentally leave your Benchmade bug out on a log or a, a picnic table or on the banister of your porch while you're hunting or camping and dew hits it overnight or a frost hits it overnight, the likelihood of you having rust spots on that blade is significantly lower than a D2 blade. And we can't forever guess what we're going to be doing with our knives forever. If your D2 steel blade is going to be a concrete cowboy, it's going to be always in your vehicle inside your man cave or your garage breaking down boxes and stuff like that, then D2 is, you know, good to go. But if I'm processing an animal or, you know, it happens like you have stuff all over the place. You pull your knife out, you use it, you leave it setting still because your hands are dirty and you don't want to mess up the scales. And then you forget about it. You don't use it for the rest of the day. And the next thing you know, you wake up the next day and you're like, man, where's my knife? Oh, it's over there sitting next to that that kill with ticks near it. Oh, hopefully there's no spots on the blade. So, you know, for the money, it's a real bang for the buck kind of option there. Uh, it's the same thing that's in the icon knife that came out from Harbor Freight. That so the icon knife that came out from Harbor Freight was like 39 bucks. Ergonomics were disgustingly good on that knife, like really good ergonomics. I think the Harbor Freight knife had a coating on it. It is an everyday carry knife, but I think they were targeting mechanics and stuff like that. So a lot of these tool truck companies that also make knives they're obviously white gloving them from other companies they're not busting them out in their own factories but they are putting coating on a lot of these knives milwaukee's doing it klein is doing it the De dewalt is doing it any of those companies that also make tools and they want the knife and the tools to be intermingled in the same environment some blade steels are not conducive to be around brake fluid uh brake cleaner <laughs> right some knives are not conducive to be, you know, you're changing a rear differential and you got a knife sitting nearby. I don't know what differential fluid's going to do to a knife. Okay, so coatings are kind of important on knives for some of those elements. It pissed off all the knife fanboys. Uh <laughs> I don't know if it pissed off all the knife fanboys. I mean, for me, I am not a knife fanboy. I'm a I'm a benchmade sheep. Let's just let's keep that real. But I don't think I'm a knife fanboy as in blinded as a knife fanboy i think that i could objectively say what i do and don't like about something and i think when you become a blinded knife fanboy is when you get so financially invested in a brand or a specific knife and then something that does 80 percent of what your 400 dollar knife does comes out it makes you a little bit butt hurt pause right so if you spend four hundred and fifty dollars on a Benchmade Narrows, you spend five hundred dollars on the used market for a Chris Reeve knife, you spend six hundred dollars on some kind of Wii knife or whatever, and it doesn't have a thumb stud or it only has a flipper or it's a liner locker, and then you see a Harbor Freight knife come out and it's doing eighty percent of what your knife can do. It opens, it cuts. <laughs> Maybe they have to sharpen it more often, but they spent ten percent of what you spent. 5% of what you spend. It, that's when it feels a little icky. <laughs> As I said, it's got the access to lock. I like the orange look to it. It's nearly a clone of... And that's the thing. They made it orange. So making it orange makes it pop. But making it orange also leads me to believe they want you to take it outside. You know, orange knives are normally... The, the bench may tagged out, for instance. It's called the tagged out because they want you to use it accompanying with you when you go hunting. So when you're out of tags, hunting tags, the tagged out, hence the name, right? I think that's why they went with the orange color on this one, but I don't know. The uh, the, the Benchmade Bug Out series, this one has, I think they all have this kind of black, not quite a stone wash, but a blackened surface on it. It has some jimping. Um I wonder if that's like a true DLC coating or, that's the thing about the Ozark Trail, right? M Mossy Oak, Ozark Trail, the infamous, <laughs> the the very, the names we all know from Walmart, some of them are not known for the best of quality. I think we all can agree to that, right? So 
when we see this coming out with the coating is what is the coating? How good is it? Here's my thing about this knife. There's a factory edge and then there's a working edge. Working edge, you might be able to hone in between sharpenings or whatnot. But if you're not a sharpener of knives, you don't like to sharpen your knives very often. Sometimes a $10 knife might not be conducive to your enjoyment of using a knife. That's why I so often recommend, and I think I see max level EDC make the recommendations as well. Metal Complex, Neves Knives, Tri-State EDC. Knives that kind of in the ballpark between 50 and 70 bucks because they can hold the working edge longer. This $10 knife seems aesthetically pleasing, but has anyone had this thing long enough to really get rid of the working edge other than simulating through torture test? I don't think so. You know, for me, the way I use my knife, breaking down boxes, cutting fruit for my kiddos, processing, you know, raw chicken, <laughs> right? Cutting the fat off a of chicken, uh, you know, doing stuff in the man cave where I need to make some some cuts to this and cuts to that and doing really stupid stuff with my knife, like using it like a slotted screwdriver to turn a, a screw that may be coming a loose. Those are like real world, real world use cases versus a torture test. Torture test is really kind of looking to see how the edge holds up, how the lock holds up. Um, and I don't know if that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Up top. Now, here's the question. Does this feel like a $200 knife or even a $40 knife? I'm going to guess it probably feels like a $40 knife, but does it feel like a $200 knife? I don't know. What's a $200 knife, right? Benchmade bug outs came out originally for, I think they were $135 when they dropped in 2017. You can pre-order and get them for $115. I was watching the Gideon Tactical video when he got the Benchmade bug out. He talked about how he pre-ordered it and got it near a hundred bucks. Now Benchmade bug outs start $165, $170, same exact knife. You know, so would you argue to say that the knife that you have now feels like a $200? I don't know. Because a $200 knife is what a $100 knife was six years ago. So I don't know. I'll be asked in hand, this to me, well, it feels like a $10 knife. Okay. So in the fact that it feels like a $10 knife and he handles knives, he has a good assortment of knives, he's bought them, he's had them sent to him. And once you've handled a good chunk of knives, you can tell a $10 knife. However, if I were to give that knife to my buddies who don't own tools, who use kitchen knives to open up packages, who kind of just dig their hand underneath some tape to rip it apart, they would think it was awesome. Like this might be the perfect stocking stuffer, right? So that's, you have to think of it outside the box sometimes too. Not gonna lie, the, in fact, this is the second cheapest knife I have in my collection, second only to my $6 uh, gas station knife. I got a $6, $6 Ozark Trail knife. Now for me personally, the Ozark Trail knife that I got, I think it uses the crossbar lock, crossbar style lock. Hold on, let me see. Actually, I don't know where it's at. But now that I really think about it, I think that... That Ozark Trail knife uses a crossbar lock that I did a video on like a year and a half ago. Uh, the, the reason this knife is getting so much buzz because it looks like a bug out, but ben, Walmart has already sold a knife for $6.95 that gets the job done that looks, it looked nothing like the bug out. It looked like a bad mixture of a wee, maybe like a wee banter and I can't maybe like another knife mixed together. So it's kind of hard to, you know, it, but it, it, that was a fine knife and it, it is, you know, 40% cheaper than this knife. That I've had four years and, uh, you know, I, it really just sits in there. I like the look of it. It kind of reminds me of a, a knife my grandfather had back in the I mean, that knife looked like I had a lock back or something like that. I mean, six gas station knives are not the best when it comes to the steel department. And I really wouldn't trust the lockup with my hand underneath or something like that, right? 
But if you just need to keep something in your armrest of your truck and cut some stuff up every now and again, gas station knife would be fine. The day, the turquoise and everything else on it. But is this knife worth getting? And I'll be honest, at ten dollars, at ten dollars, it's hard to say no to this knife. Now, I just got this. In fact, you're going to be hard pressed to get it. Let me show you real quick. Uh, here's the website right now. This is right on Walmart, Ozark Trade. This is the same thing that happened when they dropped the Gordon multi-tool field trip. Let me see that real quick. Because I know when they dropped the Gordon multi-tool from Harbor Freight, I tried to get myself one, and I could not do it. I was unable to do it. It's still in-store only. And when I go to my local store, it just won't. It's just nothing. There's just nothing. Here's the Icon knife that he was talking about earlier, 40 bucks. Um, this is a liner lock D2 steel. I think it, I think it has a coating, but anyway, so this one here is sold out. I, I would imagine, you know, give them a couple of weeks. It'd be back in stock. Rail 7.5 inch slide lock is what they're calling it. Every company comes up with a different name for it. Yeah. And a slide lock is a unique name. My favorite lock right now, when it comes to the crossbar lock has to be the clutch lock that's coming in from Kaiser. I think they call it the clutch lock. It's freaking fantastic. Followed closely behind Hoag's version, or maybe Hoag's is called the clutch. Anyways, Hoag's access style lock, their crossbar is good. For me right now, my favorite is probably the, the Kaiser, especially on that drop bear. But I will tell you this. There are certain versions of Benchmade knives that are so tuned. They're so really, they're really, really good with the crossbar lock. For instance, my Benchmade 945 BK Mini Osborne. Oh my God. Spidey flick, index, thumb. You look at that knife wrong and you're going to be able to make that um, axis lock work out for you. So it's not everyone though, because I got some Benchmade bug outs. I'm like, oh, I hate this knife. I hate this specific knife, not all the knives all together. So I don't know. I would imagine this one, you may have to work the detent, you know, maybe just open the knife a hundred times and it's going to be great. Folding knife with, because I really haven't seen him flick it that much, but you know, I would imagine that the action on this is not, may not be great out the box. I'm not about to take it apart and adjust it. What I would do is just literally open it a hundred times, 150 times, and see if I can make the action a little bit better that way. Ball bearings, that's the other thing, it has a ball bearing hinge on it. So you can see here, it swings real nicely. Has a good snap to it, real lightweight. It's even got the thumb stud for people who like that. I'm not particularly a fan of those. Uh, it has a, a- And so him and I are a little bit different. I don't particularly open up crossbar locks by pulling down on the pivot. Um, I use the thumb stud, so I would, really want a good thumb stud and to make sure that it's working good retention clip on it let me see if i can get my hand in there there you can see the clip on it uh really really i mean the clip doesn't look like a very deep carry i can't really tell i mean i don't know how good is this knife going to be for wearing wool pants some dickies you're a carpenter you're a painter you wear thick 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 pants is that pocket clip gonna i guess it's gonna be able to get over it i can't really tell i'm also not a big fan of pocket clips that allow some of the knife to be ex too much exposed out of your pocket okay like i'm not a big fan of that so like if we look at this i just have sitting on my table is a um this is the gerber arm bar but this one has a clip that kind of is more flush so if i were to put this in my pocket you can't i'm far away from the camera but a lot of the multi-tool would not be sticking out of my pocket i like that this knife that he's showing you're gonna have some you're going to have some of that knife sticking out of your pocket. If you're okay with that, it is what it is. So really strong springy steel. That's that's strong in there. It's going to hold it tight. It's not the deepest that I've seen when it comes to, you know, how deep that clip is set. Some people like a really deep carry. This isn't going to give you that. In fact, on most of them, like you saw on my bench made, I take the belt clip off or I don't, or pocket clip. I don't use those usually. Now that said. Okay. So he's keeping his on a desk or an armrest of a truck. Yeah, that, that's fair. I like pocket clips because they assist with the different mechanisms that I open the knife, but he's already said he doesn't like using a thumb stud, so it doesn't really matter. For me, if I want a spotty flick or even get a good flick, 
especially when I have one hand on a work piece, I want the knife to open up well while I hold the work piece. So I don't want to rely on the ceramic ball bearings and pulling on the pivot to open up a knife, if that makes sense. Ed, for $10, for $10 with D2 steel, with the axis style lock, I'm sorry, the slide lock. Um, you know, it again, it's the edges of this feel a little rough. There's a it looks like it doesn't have liners. Um, ergonomics may not be the greatest, but I mean, it's 10 bucks. It's ten dollars. Even if it's like, even if this is an armrest truck, armrest knife, it's ten dollars. Like you know, come on. There's a little wiggle. I think it's in in this in the uh, in the clip. Now this could be. This was a. Um, it was an open box. It was their demo. Uh, okay, that's the thing. He has a demo knife. I wonder if it's centered. It's a demo knife. A lot of phalanges have been on that knife. I would love to know if the blade is centered. And does it does it have a lot of play? But at ten bucks, yeah, it might it might have all that. Uh, you know, under the counter kind of knife because they sold out of all the rest of them. And as you can see here, it says out of stock. Now you can click on the little notify me right down over here if you can see the mouse here. Right there, click notify me, and you can find out when they're back in stock. You can check uh, areas near you. Uh, there. That's the thing I would normally do: hop on the bike and just kind of take off and go check the store itself and just to see what type of deal I might be able to get by going to a store. The thing is I have a neighborhood Walmart near me, which do they? So the neighborhood Walmart to get a knife, they have to have them in the middle of the aisle or on an end cap because they don't have a tool section or automotive section. They're not in selling Freon in there and all the other type of stuff. So normally at the super Walmarts or big Walmarts, you can go find the tools and find Ozark Trail and look for the knife. My neighborhood Walmart, which is bikeable, which I hop on a bike and go to, I that's where I bought my six dollar Ozark Trail knife. It was just sitting in the middle of the aisles where they move the end caps around and they entice you to buy the items as you're walking by. That's when I got the six dollar Ozark Trail. Then that, they also had the six dollar multi tool, which I didn't buy that day. I bought the next day. Never did a video about, but. I mean, they're six bucks. So maybe I'll maybe I'll go to mine tomorrow and see if I can get one. They're completely sold out anywhere around me. But again, for ten dollars, I get it. I, I get it. It's I'm really I don't think of myself as a knife collector. I am. I mean, <laughs> oh man, it's like this unhealthy balance. I'm a knife collector, but I force myself if my knives don't fit in my home in Hadfield Armada. I'm not getting any vagina, okay? So I have to really buttonhole myself down, limit the amount of knives I allow companies to send me, because uh, I enjoy I enjoy coochie. I do. Uh, so. More as somebody who knives seem to collect me, they just keep showing up from places. I just always seem to get a new knife somehow. I don't know why. It's not like I'm actually going out of my way. To and it's so crazy because you know what I just bought? Let me show you guys what I just bought. I just spent some money on the James brand Carter knife from back country. And this thing is grossly overpriced in my opinion at $168. I can link this in the description for y'all as well. I ended up buying it with the micarta scales for 84 bucks. This is the lowest price on the internet. So I'm like, you know what? This is for 84 85 bucks i will be willing to roll the dice i will be willing to roll the dice and to see how do i like it i'm not going to return this i'm going to buy it i keep i keep hearing the pocket clip is fantastic i, I see a lot of people complain that it's not centered when they get it the thumb the thumb disc they wish it was a thumb stud but i'm kind of like you know is it a hundred dollar knife from what I've been seeing? No, it's VG 10 blade steel, which was all the bees knees, what, six, five, six years ago. But CPM has invented so many or came out with so many different American steels. They're kind of crushing that Japanese steel. But I mean, for 84 bucks, I bought it before I even recommend it to like all my channel. I was going to get in and see what I thought about it. Channel members, I mean, I'll give you the link to this if you want to. You just go to Backcountry and type in the Carter knife, and there you go. So 
you might be able to decide you want to get that as well. You get them. But let's see here. Let's let's test this out real quick. So first, I'm going to take the Benchmade. This Hold on real quick. Turn off the boys' room TV. Fortunately, my boys have fallen asleep. So now I can finish this video. Yeah, they both have fallen asleep. So now he's going to test this out on cardboard, which is fibrous. So free cutting cardboard, which I think he's about to do. It, this knife that I'm assuming still has its factory edge, it's, it's, it's probably going to be just fine, right? Um, I would like to see how it does on a thin sheet of paper with a factory edge, not a piece of cardboard that's fibrous. But let's just, you know, for me personally, um, like me some good serrated, <laughs> serrated on cardboard. But that's just... This was uh sharpened it was about a year ago and it was professionally sharpened i didn't do it i was at a store and they're like hey we'll sharpen that for you I'm like yeah go to town uh so let's see how this so that knife hasn't been sharpened in a year i wonder how often he uses it though this one does <laughs> this is car it needs to be sharpened <laughs> so it needs to be sharpened um it's been a year since he sharpened it he probably hasn't honed it in between uh so I mean, he, that was his first cut, but I think it needs to be sharp. Cardboard, not paper, right? Yeah. Yeah, that needs to be sharpened. So, I, I mean, I'm just curious to know, like, you know, how would this Ozark Trail perform, though? Does all right. Does all right. I didn't want to do paper. Paper, the paper one is such a gimmick. Uh, it doesn't take much to slice through paper. I don't know if it's a gimmick, though. I don't know, Barry. This is where I kind of disagree. The reason that the gimmick, it, the reason that people cut paper with a brand new factory edge is to, especially like it's something as thin as yellow pages, is to show how well the this company did their factory edge. Can it slice paper? Because in theory, it, it may almost be able to slice hair off of your off of your arm. A knife that can't slice paper is almost a dangerous knife because if if your knife needs to be sharpened and like for me if my knife can't sharpen can't slice paper i don't run out and sharpen it right but if it can't slice through like you know cardboard without me really having to force it um if it can't slice through tape <laughs> without me really having to force it that's a dangerous knife so when you get a brand new knife with a factory edge, it should be able to slice paper with like well, free handed, you know. And that's the first thing you test out when you sharpen a knife. So I don't think it's a gimmick per se. I think it's just a test to see is this knife sharp and safe. That's how I see it. I'm not a knife expert. That, that That's just how I look at it. So let's do this one. Actually, we're going to start here. We're going to punch in. All right, let me try that with this one because that was. So that's a factory edge. I mean, obviously, I would expect for it. And then he punched in on it first versus the same entering from the side. So I, I can understand that. Really thing. easy. Yeah, that's sharper than my actual Benchmade. Yeah, Benchmade, it just needs to be sharper. I think if that Benchmade was sharpened, it would probably. So here's, a, here's the test, right? The Ozark Trail, brand new with the factory edge, and that Benchmade sharpened. Then you're you're cutting. If you just want to do this type of test, then you're forcing both of them to cut, you know, 40 pieces of cardboard. And then you're putting two, three pieces of cardboard together and slicing through that. I mean, that's more of a, like a control test. I still wouldn't do it because your arm gets fatigued and your hands might start sweating and you might have the ergonomic. I just don't think it's a it's an apples to apples test, but it at least gives you a little bit of something, you know. Now, could be my benchmade's gotten dull over the year. It happens. Uh, let's try the old uh, gas station knife. Let's see how it does. Watch it beat both of them. No. No, that needs to be sharpened as well. I mean, so the Benchmade and that gas station knife right now are dangerous knives. Like, they both need to be sharpened. But they are something that could be worked on, if that makes sense. No, no, it's not going to do it. But this... Yeah, that, that was... I mean, in its cardboard fibrous i like partial serrations for cut like i don't break down cardboard with very often 
if that makes sense. I break down boxes, which is just cutting through the tape and then folding them up and putting them in my recycle. But do I slice cardboard? I don't slice cardboard very often. And when I do, I like to use a partial serration. Partial serrations make cardboard its bitch. <laughs> like it is so good because the phosphorus fibers in cardboard and partial serrations don't mix. Partial serrations that are sharp will always laugh at cardboard. So yeah. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience, as they would say. All right. Am I going to say this is the best knife in the world? No. Uh, but it's definitely gained meme-like quality on the internet. Meme-like, like, real fast, too. I mean, just scrolling. And I don't watch a lot of EDC videos. I'm on my second account, which is my second account. I watch all the EDC videos. My main account, I watch a lot of politics. I watch a lot of movie retrospectives. <laughs> I watch a lot of... Um, uh, you know, people making fun of other people on the internet. I like to watch that type of stuff. I don't watch a lot of EDC videos. So when I click on this account, this is all EDC. And so one of the things that popped up the most was this new Ozark trail knife. I'm like, God dang, get off. It's freaking sack for a, a $10 knife to throw in the bag. I like it cause it's orange. A lot of the interior, you know, you go to reach in a bag, bags are dark. Often they're black on the interior. It's hard to find a knife. I get a knife like this. Good luck finding it. I have. To be fair, though, you you take your pocket clip off your knives. If I put a knife in a bag or a pouch, it's clipped on a molly strap or some type of strap to a slip pocket or something like that. Because I don't want to be digging around a bag for a knife, right? Um, a slice of phalange or anything like that. This thing and it jumps right out at you, all right? That's like when my hunting knives are all orange, so when I reach in the bag out there, I can find them easily. Uh, I get it, I get it. This is probably get, end up getting thrown in the truck, used as a, you know, because at $10, here's the thing, D2 steel, bright orange, easy to see, nice ax, axis style, sorry, sliding lock, and it's 10 bucks, and if it goes away, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> the literal toss right um i can agree with that like if it does grow legs i don't think you would be really butthurt about it like i don't i just don't think you would be butthurt about it there are times when people come to the man cave and i might show them my knives or my bourbon or my cigars or my audio equipment or my whatever and if it's buddies i don't sweat it but if it's like some buddy a buddy of a buddy of a buddy <laughs> Right. And here's a here's an indicator of somebody I need to watch here in my man cave. I keep an assortment of cigarettes here. I don't smoke cigarettes, but I think I'm a good guest. You come here. I got cigarettes. You want to smoke them, then have at it. But if you kind of overly are smoking my cigarettes, right, because I tell you verbally, I don't smoke them. And I give you an unopened pack of 20 cigarettes and you smoke 15 and you've been here for two hours. That's the person I need to watch to just make sure that the other things don't grow legs. Right. So <laughs> anyway, there you go. For those of you who are interested in it, you can check it out. I'll put a link down below. You can check your local warrant, see if they have it or you can get on the notify list. And when it comes back in stock, hopefully. Yeah, I don't maybe I think I'll run over there tomorrow. I might even vlog it. I just need to just to see if it's there. Um, everybody's what I've seen on the internet so far, except for a few, a few folks, the factory edge has been impressing people. And that's why people are kind of really impressed by it. But I want to know how long does it hold the factory edge? How long until you got to sharpen this thing? Is it going to become a headache? I don't even know what the blade shape is. I couldn't tell if it's a, I think it was a draw point, but you know, is it going to be easy to sharpen? Like that's the type of stuff you got to wear. It's coated. You know, you're going to jack that up. It's just so many things you got to think about sometimes. They'll email you. Good luck with that. Anyway, if you like what we're doing here, chop the old like button, smash that subscribe, ring the bell on the way out. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you letting me watch that good old Kanito watching that content. Yeah, man. It's just really interesting. Um, Super interesting just to be able to see like what is... This Ozark Trail knife, it is just a, let me see, Ozark, let's just see, Ozark Trail. How many people are already still talking about this bad boy? I mean, like, <laughs> there are a lot of people who are featuring this thing. People are doing YouTube shorts about it. We have 704 Gear did, he did a video about it. I mean, even the packaging reminds me of like a Milwaukee 
folding knife. We got a last best tool did a video three days ago. Max level EDC did a video five days ago. Killed it with the views. That's what I'm talking about. 135,000. He deserves that. Because the reason I say that, he's not fly by night. Like he's always looking for good deals when it comes to affordable knives. He's always looking for good deals. And he will point out knives that are not a meme and try to get you a recommendation for $30. He's not doing it, you know, just because everybody else is doing it. Uh, let's see, Outpost 77. There's a lot of folks I've never even heard of. That doesn't mean they don't do content normally. I've just never heard of it before. And I get it. I mean, if you're near Walmart, go pick up a Ozark Trail knife. Here's the one I had, right? It looks like that one over here on the left side of this photo. So makes a lot of sense. Walmart Ozark Trail $10 knife versus $160 bench made. Some I did two days ago. You see those versus videos? Those are the ones that are tough for me because his $160 bench made. Like, when's the last time it was sharpened? <laughs> is it a, it just, I don't know if this is a fair fight. Those are the things. Yeah, I'm not going to do a video on this knife. It's, it's plenty of content out here for people. I might just do a commentary video, uh, but I don't, I'm not going to go buy this knife and do a video. I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't see value in that, but I think it might be something if you see one nearby and go ahead and pick one up. Like, why not? I didn't know that this freaking Gerber had such a fidget factor. <laughs> I did not know that. Hey, guys, I appreciate y'all once again continuing to support the channel, trying to pump out more members-only content. I wanted the one to test this out. I got a new little cover for my mic, and I wanted to see if it suppressed the sound a little bit too much and all the other good stuff. So let me know what you think about that down below. Guys, we will speak soon.